the biology lecture for May 22nd. Uh, the nerve impulse and transmission. Uh, this is just a review of last day, actually. We're starting off with the axomembrane um, and the axoplasm. This is just a small portion of an axon, and we're detailing all the events, uh, what's going on in the resting potential, what happens to the axon when there's no nerve impulse, um, what is its just resting state. Uh, the outside is positive, while the inside is negative. Uh, there are three reasons for that. Uh, one being that there is an active sodium potassium pump that pumps three sodiums out for every two potassiums into the cell. Uh, we've diagrammed that here, so two potassiums in, three sodiums out. The net result is that we have more positive charge on the outside of the cell. As well, uh, with the inside having potassium and the outside having sodium, there is a, a strong osmotic potential ac across the membrane. And it turns out the membrane is not completely impermeable um, at these concentrations to sodium and potassium. It is leaky to sodium, but it's really leaky to potassium. So lots of this potassium ends up leaking out much more than the sodium leaks in. This again increases the positive charge outside of the cell. So more potassium out than sodium in by diffusion. And the third reason is that inside there are large negative proteins in the axoplasm. These are too large to move across the membrane, and it's represented by this structure right here. So we have large negative proteins to help keep the inside negative. The, if you measure the potential across this membrane, it's about negative 65 millivolts. The action potential. If we were to be measuring the potential across the membrane, as, I, as was just shown, and that we have a nerve stimulation, uh, suggest uh, a change in pH, a pinch, a light, uh, something that causes it to actually react, we will get a trace on an oscilloscope. The potential will go from negative 65 millivolts to plus 40. This is known as depolarization. Then from plus 40 to minus 65. This is a repolarization. It actually goes a bit lower than minus 65 to about minus 70. That's termed hyperpolarization. Then we have an area where the nerve cannot fire again. This is the refractory period. And then once it can fire again, we are back into the resting potential. We will discuss these sections all separately. First, we will discuss depolarization. Um, when a nerve is stimulated, this causes sodium channels in the membrane to open up temporarily. Sodium, remember, is on the outside of the axoplasm. When sodium channels open up, the sodium can actually move into the membrane, as is shown here. This reverses the charge on, the, on this section of the membrane of the neuron. It goes from being negative on the inside and positive on the out, to positive on the inside and negative on the outside. So the sodium, both the sodium and potassium are on the inside of the cell and negative is on the out. So the sodium flows into the axon. The charge changes from negative to positive in the axoplasm and positive to negative outside. This is known as depolarization. On the oscilloscope trace that we just saw, the bottom of the trace, uh, that's when the sodium channel is opened. The po um, polarity switches and it goes from about negative 65 to plus 40 millivolts, and at the very top of the trace, the sodium channels close. So this is the first step, depolarization. The second step, repolarization, is now at the top of the trace here, the potassium channels open. Now the potassium will move from inside the axoplasm to outside of the axoplasm. And then at the bottom of the trace, the potassium channels will close again. This will bring it from plus 40 millivolts down to minus 70 millivolts. The potassium will then flow out of the axon by diffusion, and this repolarizes. Um, inside is once again negative. Outside is once again positive. So it's a repolarization. However, are the ions in the correct spots? The ions are not. Instead of having sodium on the outside and potassium on the inside, they are now reversed. So although we've re, uh, repolarized it in terms of charge 
it's down to about minus 70 millivolts, which is close to what we had before. The ions are completely reversed. If the sodium channel is open, it's not going to make a difference. Uh, we can't refire this section of the membrane. This um, section at, is known as the refractory period. Until we can get those ions back to their original concentrations, the nerve won't fire again. Uh, this particular section of the membrane just can't go. It's going to be made to go by the sodium-potassium pump that will work to restore the concentration. Now, this area where it goes down to minus 70 is known as hyperpolarization. As uh, the sodium-potassium pump continues to fix the concentrations, this will bring it back up to minus 65, and then once... Uh, the sodium potassium pump has put sodium back on the outside and potassium back on the inside, and the refractory period will be over. So the sodium potassium pump restores original concentration. Until that time, it is in the refractory period. No nerve impulse can be conducted in the refractory period. Uh, this impulse will excite the membrane next to it and continue the transmission. How is the nerve impulse then conducted uh, down the membrane? If we think of this as a long membrane um, made of multiple sections, uh, we can see in this section uh, the sodium channels have opened and are probably about to close. The charges are reversed, so the inside is positive and the outside is negative. This depolarization causes the section next to the membrane to um, undergo depolarization. So in this section of the membrane, the sodium gates would then start to open. Uh, sodium would flood in, and uh, that would trigger a depolarization on the next section of membrane. So depolarization of one section of the membrane causes depolarization of the next uh, section of the membrane, and then that moves down the neuron. It doesn't reverse. It propagates in one direction only, because behind this, Although we have uh, inside negative, outside positive, right here we have the sodium-potassium pump working and it's in the refractory period. It can't refire once it's in the refractory period, so depolarization doesn't reverse. If it's further, far enough away, it won't depolarize the area behind it. In this way, it will only move ahead of it. If we were to show what's happening in terms of millivolt, volts down here in the trace, we have the first section. This is in the resting potential. This area is undergoing depolarization and then repolarization, uh, hyperpolarization. This area is in the refractory period here. And this is a review of the first section of the action potential uh, for the May 26 uh, Biology 12 class as an overall review.